uh, students today we are going to discuss preparation of metal carbonyls that how metal carbonyls are uh, uh, prepared in the lab uh, so uh, in the beginning of this course uh, uh, or this chapter we discussed it uh, how carbonyl complexes were obtained because this was in uh, somehow it was accidental discovery but uh, then the <coughs> Ludwig Mund prepared the uh, nickel carbonyl in the lab by passing a hot stream of carbon monoxide through uh, impure nickel and uh, tetracarbonyl nickel zero was obtained as vapors are in gaseous state and this uh, gaseous nickel carbonyl was then converted into uh, respective pure nickel and carbon monoxide gas uh, and that was a real revolution in the uh, nickel refinery industry and nowadays the nickel refinery industry follows the same rules uh, which were introduced by the Ludwig Mund. So in the first uh, uh, method what we have to do uh, iron uh, powder or definitely this uh, impure iron has to be converted into fine powder in order to increase the surface area for reaction uh, carbon monoxide is passed through this powder uh, and uh, uh, at an elevated temperature of 200 degrees C and also 200 atmospheric pressure of uh, gas that is carbon monoxide is needed uh, for the reaction so at this high pressure and uh, uh, high temperature the carbon monoxide reacts with iron to give pentacarbonyl iron zero complex uh, another uh, reaction is iridium chloride uh, with COD and L2. COD is cyclooctadiene. So again carbon monoxide is passed through this complex and uh, what we are getting, we are getting actually the carbonyl complex. The L is uh, trimethylphosphine ligand. So powder of this complex definitely our suspension is probably uh, subjected or uh, this carbon monoxide is passed through powder or uh, suspension uh, in an appropriate solvent uh, and the reaction uh, actually affords the products as a uh, metal carbonyl complex. Now this method is actually called direct method. Direct method is that method in which a substrate is used uh, in the presence of carbon monoxide gas without using other chemical that can be solvent, can be catalyst, can be other reagent which does, which does not appear in the product. Uh, so therefore this is called the direct method. Somehow general experimental representation of this method could be uh, like this is a cylindrical part or you can uh, consider this as flask or other pressurized container. And in this pressurized container, the substrate species are metal uh, which is probably impure or in this case this is a complex. This complex is placed at the bottom of this uh, 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 apparatus or setup and this tube which actually leads uh, here directly. So this is actually gas inlet. So carbon monoxide is passed through this gas and is entered to the bottom of this uh, container. Now what uh, the gas will do, gas will bubble out through this sample which can be a suspension, which can be solid powder or any appropriate uh, uh, phase of matter. This gas whenever is uh, uh, passed through this uh, uh, material, this sample, so what happens while passing through its path the carbon monoxide will react with the metal containing species or metal containing impure material and extra gas or excess of gas which we call is unreacted gas it will be collected in this vacant place and then gas leads to uh, outer side yeah, outside so this is actually gas outlet so gas is entered to the bottom of the sample it is allowed to pass through the sample and it reacts while passing through the sample excess of gas is then recollected and prob probably it is repassed through uh, the reaction setup or to the experimental setup 
uh, and uh, the uh, desired product is therefore obtained. Next method is in the presence of reducing agent. So this method is actually uh, uh, a method which needs a bit more reaction reactants as compared to the previous one which was direct method. In the presence of reducing uh, agent we have to use at least three species. Uh, one of them would be reducing agent. So here for example we are carrying out reaction of nickel sulfate with carbon monoxide so a reducing agent is uh, needed which is thiosulfate and this thiosulfate uh, we uh, are not uh, actually we will not suppose the presence of thiosulfate that uh, how thiosulfate reacts or how thiosulfate converts uh, into another species in this reaction uh, in order to make the reaction simple so nickel reacts with carbon monoxide and definitely in the presence of this reducing agent and tetracarbonyl nickel zero is obtained another reaction is rhenium oxide and in this rhenium oxide is treated with carbon monoxide and here the function of carbon monoxide is dual one the carbon monoxide is supposed to act as a ligand and also this carbon monoxide or some of the molecules are allowed to act as reducing agent so whenever carbon monoxide is treated with rhenium oxide so if you uh, consider the electronic configuration of rhenium so it must uh, possess an unpaired electron and due to that unpaired electron metal metal bond is expected for this metal metal bond we have to um, discuss 18 electron rules inshallah in coming discussion uh, so uh, metal metal bond is obtained and five carbon monoxide molecules per rhenium gets attached to the metal center and uh, seven moles of carbon dioxide gas is produced so if you look here at this carbon dioxide so actually carbon monoxide is um, uh, uh, enabled to extract one oxygen per molecule uh, from rhenium oxide in order to give carbon dioxide and uh, i am sure you know that removal of oxygen from a species is actually called reduction so this carbon monoxide is a as a reason or is a source to extract oxygen or to remove oxygen from this compound and on the basis of this uh, removing capacity of carbon monoxide uh, it is also called as reducing agent so carbon monoxide uh, plays dual uh, role in this reaction one is ligand and the other one is reducing capacity or reducing is reducing agent this is another reaction uh, where carbon monoxide is already uh, attached uh, but in this case the carbon monoxide or carbonyl species cannot be obtained uh, without uh, this tamida tamida is tetramethyl ethylene diamine and this compound is treated with sodium in order to get a, a pure compound or relatively uh, simple compound so it is treated with sodium where sodium acts as reducing agent and you are also familiar with such type of species which are generally used as reducing agent in chemistry so uh, sodium tetracarbonyl chromium uh, 3 is obtained so in this case chromium from here you can uh, uh, just uh, consider the structure of tetramethyl ethylene diamine and this is the structure of tetramethyl ethylene diamine so this is a neutral ligand because we, we cannot uh, see any charge here nitrogen are the uh, bonding around nitrogens they are satisfied CH2 is satisfied so this is a neutral ligand so ventamida is a neutral ligand carbon monoxide is a neutral ligand so chromium is present in zero oxidation state uh, and whenever it is this compound is treated with sodium so chromium is converted into plus three oxidation state because this is sodium tetracarbonyl chromium three complex so our so sodium tetracarbonyl chromate three this is the IUPAC name so chromium from zero oxidation state is converted into plus three oxidation state which is actually oxidation and this oxidation is caused by a reagent which is used as reducing agent which is sodium in this reaction 
Uh, a third method is uh, the use of organic carbonyls as precursors. So, in this method, we will use uh, in third method we will use organic carbonyl compounds, and these carbonyls will uh, be used as source of carbon monoxide. Uh, and definitely, the reaction will proceed in, as multi-step reaction because uh, in more than one step, the car organic molecule will provide carbon monoxide or carbonyl to the metal center so rhodium chloride and this is the complex l3 is probably this is uh, used normally in chemistry for trialkyl or trialkyl phosphine ligands so trialkyl or triethyl phosphine ligand and if you look at surrounding of rhodium so this is four coordinated one is chlorine and three other monodentate ligands and this is generally used for monodentate ligands so 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. So coordination uh, sphere of uh, rhodium is uh, with 4 ligands. Our coordination number is 4. Uh, this is organic uh, carbonyl compound. So this organic uh, carbonyl halide or acid halides, they are treated with the uh, uh, this complex. And in this case, if you look, so this type of complex is obtained. And this type of complex, the process which takes place is actually called oxidative addition. So oxidative addition is that reaction in which uh, addition of two ligands simultaneously takes place to the coordination sphere of a metal center. And in this case, the coordination number increases by two. So rhodium from plus from coordination number four, it raises to coordination number six. So this is one ligand another ligand one ligand is here so total number of ligands three plus three is equal to six so from coordination number four coordination number raises to uh, six and this phenomena in which coordination number is increased by uh, a number of two so this this phenomena is called oxidative addition so after oxidative addition but in this case rco our metal this is a carbon halogen bond breaks so halogen is also added to the metal center or coordination sphere of the metal and rco is also added to the coordination sphere of the metal center in next step what uh, happens so retro migratory insertion takes place and in retro migratory insertion now this ligand uh, will rearrange and coordination number of metal since here it is uh, six so coordination number of this type of metal they do not exceed uh, six because this is the maximum capacity of such uh, metal complexes so in this case uh, what happens one ligand will be removed from the complex because here l is three and here l r two so two ligands and three ligands so one ligand is removed uh, and what happens the carbon r group or can can be alkyl or can be aryl so this aryl or alkyl is now directly added to the metal center so how many ligands are attached directly to the metal one two three four and plus two is equal to six so here also the coordination number of metal center is six in next step what happens that uh, reductive elimination takes place reductive elimination and oxidative addition they are two reactions which are exactly opposite to each other uh, in terms of chemistry and uh, particularly in coordination chemistry so reductive elimination is a phenomena in which the coordination number of a metal complex reduces by two so in this case the coordination number of metal metal was six and when rx so r is here and x is here so alkyl halide or aryl halide is removed from the system or from the complex and the remaining complex is now uh, rhodium with one chlorine which was also present in the starting reaction or uh, starting precursor uh, ligands now here they are two in number and here ligands were three so one ligand has been replaced by carbon monoxide and this resultant compound is called carbonyl complex or metal carbonyl
So in this case, if you look at the coordination number of metal, so uh, here is one ligand, one ligand is here, and two ligands are here. So coordination number of metal is four, and in starting material also coordination number of uh, coordination number of metal was four. So coordination number of metal in reactant is will is in final final product remains the same while in the way of sedative addition followed by retromigratory insertion and uh, finally reductive elimination lead to this type of complex. So uh, these are only three representative methods in which carbon monoxide complex complexes or carbonyl complexes are prepared. You can find out more uh, methods in uh, related books of chemistry uh, and uh, 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 probably you can uh, get or increase your knowledge from those reactions. But here we are supposed only to discuss representation.